Some photos of my de-rusting efforts before we move along to some live video as I break down the uh, loudspeaker here on the Zenith 707. Thanks for watching. folks and thanks for joining me. I'm back on the Zenith 707 loudspeaker and I've taken some time to apply some navel jelly to the frame itself to the areas I could access and then you can see I've got the uh, output transformer removed and uh, there's that damage itself you can see right in this area where the uh, mice were chewing at some point in time. Uh, the good thing is it appears that our secondary winding is on the outside and uh, you can see the gauge wire there is a little thicker and uh, probably only 20-25 turns of uh, magnet wire. So I think we're good there. Everything checks good. We'll look at the uh, impedance of what's reflected back to the primary a little later on. So I noticed a rattle around 400 to 600 hertz uh, doing some testing on the loudspeaker and uh, the entire surround is loose so the uh, glue is uh, given up and a little bit of rubbing of the voice coil so we're just a little off center so what I'm going to do is uh, remove the uh, screw here in the center that holds the uh, spider in place here to the cone and uh, just go around the edge here and finish removing the uh, surround itself from the basket and then just lift the whole uh, voice coil and cone assembly out or at least that's my plans let's get this uh, screw out of the center I've already broken it loose And you can see the fastener there that was used. One screw, one nut. And I'll do this offline. I'm going to just go back around the uh, basket here and make 100% certain I've got the uh, surround and the cone free from the uh, frame itself. And then we'll lift this out. And let me see if I can lift this straight up. And I can feel some resistance, so I think that's the rubbing that I'm hearing there on the uh, voice coil where the center pole piece is just a little out of alignment. And uh, some of that is probably my own doing. You can see I removed this screw to be able to get this uh, clamp that held the wires in place. So what I'll end up doing is putting that back in, probably a longer fastener, get that snug down and at the same time use some shims around this uh, center pole piece that uh, you can see here where I did the cutting and then the rest of the area right here you can see the uh, speaker itself was uh, actually just free from the uh, frame itself. So looking at this particular loudspeaker I should be able to remove this fastener here and then I should be able to completely remove the uh, fuel coil and the humbucking coil from the frame and then I can get this uh, cleaned up and painted and I've got the uh, documentation here for the uh, wiring you can see the uh, wires here the uh, lower side goes to the uh, humbucking coil which is in series with the voice coil and uh, this is the fuel coil wires itself the one in yellow is the uh, most inner winding going back to the rectifier tube and I think we can validate that as well we'll do some testing on that just to make sure and then you can see some more rust removal here that I'll do before trying to uh, touch this up a little bit let me go ahead and get this fastener out and see if I can just remove this entire uh, center core and uh, see what the frame itself looks like. It's a pretty cool design and uh, one that lends itself to be able to uh, easily be worked on. Well, I hope so anyway.
there's this one fastener we'll get that out of the way and again if I had to rewind the fill coil which I don't or at least I it checked good in the beginning you can see how easy it is to uh, access the uh, fill coil right here on the uh, around the center pole piece so unlike the others that I've had to uh, tap that center piece out and for folks that are not familiar with a electrodynamic speaker I'll make sure we get this back in correctly as well when it comes time but you can see the orientation here of the uh, humbucking coil that resides here and I'll put a link up as well if you want to know how the uh, humbucking coil actually works I did a demonstration of that in a previous uh, video so uh, let me just check things out a little closer here and I'll come back and talk about next steps this is the uh, soft iron material right here that's been attached to the uh, frame itself by some uh, pop rivets you can see and uh, hopefully it's well centered so uh, we'll leave these in place of course and uh, I'll just wash this off real good and then uh, clean up here real well around the edges where the surround can lay back down flat and then we'll look and see if I need to build this uh, gasket back up try to uh, dust off the uh, cone and of course we'll double check the uh, voice coil to make sure that we're still good there my guess is this will read a DC resistance of around uh, probably 2.8 to 3.2 ohms of DC resistance we'll check that here in just a bit and you can see the uh, magnetic gap that the uh, voice coil actually would reside in so it looked to me, and I'll double check, to be centered so the width of the uh, voice coil itself is just a little wider than the uh, soft iron here. But I think it was pretty much centered. We'll look at that closer when it comes time to getting it back in the uh, frame itself. And again, you can see the width of the voice coil, what I was speaking of. You can see the amount of crap that's uh, inside of this thing so it's good to get it out because we don't want any of that in the uh, center pole piece or around that in the uh, voice coil to create that uh, rubbing that I'm hearing so to dissolve this mess I think what I'm going to uh, do is uh, make up a, a bath of uh, citric acid and water I don't think that will do any harm to what we already have and uh, just let this thing uh, soak for a number of hours and then come back and try to clean up some of the um, areas here get some of this uh, crud out okay a little hunt here around the uh, shop and I found something here that should work and uh, we'll fill it up about uh, halfway or a little bit more than just continue to uh, rotate this thing through to be able to catch the entire frame itself. Let me go get some hot tap water and uh, just mix this up a little bit. Then uh, we'll let this thing sit for maybe 8 to 10 hours. Then we'll come back and uh, take a look at it, see if it looks uh, in good enough shape to be able to give a thorough cleaning and a wipe down and apply some primer and some paint over the uh, basket while protecting the uh, center uh, pole area not to get any paint in that area. We'll fill this about halfway with water. I think that's good enough. And then I'll put a couple scoops of citric acid in here and uh, maybe three or four drops of some uh, dishwashing detergent. And I just let the uh, basket here uh, sit in here for a number of hours and I'll flip it over a few times and uh, probably change the uh, solution as well along the way. And we'll give that a good stir. All right, let's check the pH and see where we're sitting at. You can see here I'm pretty acidic with just uh, two scoops, 1.25. 
so um, that's plenty. I don't want to be more aggressive than that this over time and once I put the uh, basket itself in there uh, the pH should go up, probably even get neutral at some point. Let me clean this off with uh, tap water. Alright, we'll just let that sit there for a while. Then I'll uh, flip it over here, maybe in about two or three hours. Let's turn the meter on and just look at DC resistance. And uh, just under the uh, 3 ohms that I mentioned just a little bit ago, 2.87. So uh, the voice coil looks uh, good. It's not open at this point. So uh, we'll try to preserve it, set it off to the and side. Just try to clean up around the uh, column itself on the back. It's pretty fragile. And uh, probably go ahead and make some of these repairs here on the back as well with some glue. Uh, why I can access the uh, cone, why it's out, and then uh, do the same for the uh, front side as well. Let's uh, grab the uh, fill coil and uh, measure it, and uh, just, just under a thousand ohms, I believe. Make sure we're still good there as well. And the uh, fill coil is looking good as well. You can see the inductance here also at 1 kilohertz, about uh, 3.82. Again, this being uh, like a choke. So it uh, definitely helps reduce the uh, ripple here on the uh, B plus side. Again, you can see the inductance there, just under 4 Henry's and uh, 729 ohms of DC resistance measured at this point in time. Let's check the uh, output transformer next and uh, just make certain that it still reads continuity on the primary and secondary windings. We'll check the primary first. And uh, you can see we're reading good here as well. 445 ohms of DC resistance and just under 4 Henry's at 1 kilohertz. Let's look at the uh, secondary winding. All right, and there we have the uh, secondary winding, and uh, just as you would expect, very few windings here. 0.28 ohms, and uh, about 600 microhenries. Let's look at the humbucking coil. And there's our humbucking coil, and that's what you would typically see. You can see it's just a few windings here of probably a 22 to 24 AWG wire. Again, out of phase with the uh, voice coil when it's hooked up and uh, reading again 0 0.07 ohms of DC resistance and about uh, 5 micro Henry's of inductance. Let's bring the output transformer back over here and uh, let's measure the uh, turns ratio, see what it looks like. And hopefully that's showing up on camera, my little uh, transformer turns ratio meter that I built. I'll put a little pop-up here if you're interested in building one for yourself. Again, we're uh, measuring the uh, turns ratio. So I'm right at uh, 62 to 1. And we can calculate the impedance ratio. And you can see that's about uh, 3800 to 1. We'll look at a uh, tube manual a little bit later and uh, make sure that matches up with the uh, 59 output tube when we get to that point. We'll just be multiplying the impedance ratio here, 3800 times the uh, 3 ohms of uh, DC resistance or just under 3 ohms of DC resistance that we read for the uh, voice coil and uh, make sure that's a good match again for the 59 output tube.